Hey guys, Salt and Sanctuary finally came out on PC. Now you guys are all out of excuses. <laughs> Look, there's even a mouse and everything. It looks weird, actually. Ooh. All right, meet Treus, the female mage from Gulchmire. That's that's what I'm going with for now, anyway. Striking red hair, green skin, all that stuff from the uh, original we definitely did not play from last time. Uh, so, if you somehow found this place first, just so you know, this is season one. I did an entire playthrough on the PS4 version as a melee character using whips for my entire playthrough. And now I want to make a mage. Uh, it, the game is built to be a Souls-like, so we don't know for sure how good, uh, how, what to expect from magic. It'll either be a compliment to melee combat, or it'll be like the go-to, like this is how you fight. And we'll test that out as we go along. Obviously, I, ch I chose my special item as being the Amber Idol this time around, because last time we definitely learned that that's actually a pretty valuable item, whereas most of the other starting items aren't super important. Grasping Ring's decent for some bonus souls, salt, but aside from that, yeah, the Amber Idol's just really good for overall upgrades, which is nice. And we should be all set to go. This world has known war for centuries, but peace is finally preciously near. We deliver the princess to the kingdom across the sea, where a marriage alliance would save us all. Failing this mission would surely plunge us into darker days. What could go wrong, right? Literally everything. Just absolutely everything. But no big deal. He's a friend. Ow. You there, stranger. We've been bored in the night. Ugh. They... They'll want to kidnap our lady. Ransom her. Protect... Oop. So much for that. Unsuccessful. Alright. So we started off with a sword. We also have a fire spell I can cast with left trigger. I'll just test that on the next one. Let's get to this tutorial zone. I... Oh, got you. Yeah. Oh, did that, did that even hurt him? Oh, yes, it did. Burn. Fantastic. I see... Was I missing them? I must have been shooting above their hitboxes or something. There we go. You just... I think you need to aim lower. Alright, so right trigger is dodge. Gotta reacquaint myself with the controls a little bit after playing so much Dark Souls 3. A game with similar concepts, but completely different but button mapping at the very least. Thankfully, this is also a zone where you, you don't really need to survive, necessarily. Because <laughs> it is a place where you're kind of meant to lose. You, can't, you can survive it. But by, moans, by no means is it necessary. Let's check really quick. Do I have a spare healing item sitting around? I do not. Not a good start. Took more hits already than I probably should have. There we go. Onward. Hi. Oh. He seems nice. No big deal, it's just, you know, Lovecraftian terrors coming around like they do. That wasn't very effective, was it? Yep. And I'm dead. Could have done better. <laughs> Failing this mission would surely plunge us into darker days. I awoke to the sounds of waves washing on a rock, and I knew I was alive. I must find the princess. And so starts our mage playthrough, where we're going to have to figure out exactly what the nuances are of the specific casting in this game. There's supposed to be a balance between sky and fire. So you're supposed to be able to alternate between lightning and fire spells, basically, and a, a meter will actually punish you if you don't. I don't know if that really shows up yet, though. I think I might need to learn a lightning spell first. Well, hello there. You're just a flitzy bit of floatsome. Washed ashore with the rest of us, huh? You'll want shelter, you want sanctuary, but what is a sanctuary without faith? There's an empty sanctuary up the beach. You can claim it for your creed. Tell me, do you keep the new gods? No. You don't keep the new gods. Rare. So, are you a pilgrim of Devara? Your sword have been dying out for centuries, I'm afraid. No. No. Do you hold no gods at all? You're either brave, foolish, or from the north. You don't look particularly brave, but you don't look particularly foolish either. Are you a mountain smith? No. No. What was your creed then? And then you can just pick one. Goddess of Light, the three, the iron ones. 
Don't actually know which one is the best one to do for the uh, a mage off the bat. So I think we might just arbitrarily go with one, but I kind of I kind of wanted to see the full dialogue because last time I just said yes and uh, it stopped right there. We'll try the three. Most men follow the three deities: the king, the knight, and the judge. The king lends its wisdom to men who lead. The knight protects warriors in combat, and the judge guides those who maintain order. Are you a follower of the three then? I think that might be exactly what I did last time, actually, so no. Let's try the Goddess of Light. Followers of the Goddess of Light worship Devara, deity of humility, kindness, and forgiveness. Her creed is perhaps the oldest known creed, though this could be a consequence of its cleric's meticulous record-keeping. Are you a pilgrim of Devara's light, then? Sure. The follower of the Goddess of Light, your journey will be difficult. Accept this earthen vessel. It will bring Devara's blessing to the vacant sanctuary ahead. So interestingly, you can't join the, uh, the forest people right off the bat. They're exclusive to... Oop. Right. So shield is the off... Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a shield to use right now. We could review the controls, though. So we have rolling. The blocking. Also something that I don't have right now. Hey, buddy. Burn. How you feeling? It's interesting to have a nice, fast, normal melee weapon, because I got so used to using my whip with its uh, Castlevania delay and having to always deal with that. So last time I, I went ahead and, and played the entire game with a uh, with the poison people, which was kind of nice actually. Obviously I found it was very useful, much to the uh, frustration of some people who uh, didn't want me to poison things, but it was really novel to me to be able to poison things all the time. <laughs> Alright. Let's claim it. And this one vessel can be mine. There we go. Destroy! Destroy! At the moment, I don't have anything to offer it. I might be able to level up. Nope. So, looking at our starting point in the tree of skill, we have class 1 magic user, class 1 magus, and here is going to be our big, crazy chunk of uh, magic tree over here. It's probably going to be where we're focusing on. Oh, there should, oh there's, a, there's a poultice right down here, and one back here. So, go, ba backtracking a little bit for those will be worthwhile to quickly increase my number of available healing items. At the moment, I should have nothing to offer, because I did not pick Cell Sword, but not interested in having Cell Swords in a solo series anyway. I don't, I don't have anybody to summon. That's some local only stuff. Interesting little quirk of the starting equipment is that they've started off by equipping Arming Sword as a one hand with a wand, and then the, al the alternate uh, stance is the same sword, but two-handed. That's a, that's a little quirk that's kind of neat, because I don't I don't think that you can ever do that in a Dark Souls... In Dark Souls 3, anyway, I don't think... Because you can't really switch weapon sets that way. You just have individual slots that you can toggle between three different items on, but you can't do weapon sets like this. So it's kind of cool to have, like, this is my one hand, st one hand casting stance, and this is my two hand stance, basically. Nice little touch. Let's get up top. It's going to be interesting trying to toggle between these two games, because I'm still going to be playing Dark Souls 3. <laughs> And, uh, they have similar actions, but different button, uh, presses for each. I'll try my best. Also, let's switch to... There we go. Do I... Water of Blessing, there we go. That should, that should be my healing item. I do want to have that selected for when I actually get in trouble. Don't want to, like, try to use my earthen vessel in the middle of combat. Ow. I always forget that that guy can hit you through the uh, thing he's standing on. Let's go ahead and unequip some of this nonsense that I'm not interested in using. There we go. That, that'll simplify my navigation. Godspeed. At this point, it'll almost be not... It'll only be... it almost be nostalgic to go through this kind of zone again. <laughs> oh yeah, the festering bank. Remember this place? Remember? Burn! How much fight does it... So it doesn't quite kill him, but definitely does a bunch of damage over time. Seems like relatively powerful damage, too, compared to the Sword Strike, perhaps. I haven't seen this fire and sky meter on my screen yet, so they just keep coming. Let's get up there and take out this bastard. Oh! I see you hiding up there. Oh. You deserve this! There we go. There we go! These guys can't reach me up here. Do a quick heal. Right bumper of all things. That'll take some practice, huh? 
Hey. A little pouch of salt. More stuff to hold on to for when we get to the later part. Not much reason to fight the generics over here. They mostly just take up space and disappoint their parents. Hey, buddy. Now you, on the other hand, are interesting. Burn. Yay. So it does 13 damage total, which is not great. It's easy to be fooled into thinking it's doing a bunch of damage because you see a bunch of numbers popping up, but it's one number counting up. Which is not amazing, but it is a ranged attack, which is not negligible. So opening with it can increase my survivability when the actual fight starts. But over time, well, I'm sure we'll get more powerful spells that are more immediately useful than that. We have, we have access to the beginning now, but there's no real reason to go back. Not doing bad on... not really hurting for heals at the moment. Oops! Oh! Made a climbing mistake there. Oop! Oh. Yeah, I'm not really hurting for heals at the moment, so I'm not really too concerned about going back yet. Hey, oh. Hi. You deserve this. Yeah. So this is a beast, so he might be vulnerable to fire if he ever comes back. He just took off, didn't he? Hey, buddy old pal. There we go. How much damage? Nine. Less than impressive. But I can take pot shots at him for a little bit. Oh, that was bad aiming. There we go. Oh! He actually went down on only a few fireballs. Not bad. I don't have a double jump or anything, so I can't get there from here. That'll be later. You deserve that. Oh, poison bad. Careful. Gotta be careful. So the more I cast spells, you see that little the little white meter is re is reducing the length of my blue meter, which means that I have fewer spells remaining to ca uh, I have less and less stamina the more I cast spells, because casting spells exhausts you. That said, you do get that meter back if you rest or if you use potions to bring it back. Don't know if I have any right now. For now, I'll go ahead and oh, continue forward. Well, there's one reason to kill that guy, so he doesn't startle you as you come through the room. <laughs> Alright. Oop, I see that gold on the ground. It's negligible, but it's there. At some point, gold just kind of becomes an ignorable resource, though. Just because you don't make that much. There's not that much you can get with gold in many cases, and the things you can get with it quickly exhaust themselves. This is the same area, looping back on itself. The things you can buy with gold quickly exhaust themselves, and I found myself not really caring by the later parts of the game. Stop. <laughs> Apparently, something about the... I don't know if it's the Xbox controller, or if something different about how they program platforming on PC, but I've gotten stuck on a few elevators now. But yeah, in my, uh, in my previous playthrough, I found that gold seemed to be significantly less impo uh, less important as time went on. Hey guys. How do you feel about burning? Feel good? I mean, if he's just gonna sit there and take it, I might as well. It's a good opportunity. Give me a few early levels. Outta here. Who's a dead puppy? You're a dead puppy. Oh, it's adorable. Oh, he's really dead now. That guy run away? I know he's back there. You can attack people th uh, through doors, which is an important thing to learn early on, because the enemy will certainly attack you back. Here we go. It's good to be back. It's one of those things where it's been... Uh, it's not long enough for me to forget the game entirely, but it's been just long enough for me to have to l spend a little time reacquainting myself with the, with the uh, locals. Here we go. Shortcut. What does this open up to? I think it just... Oh, it's locked. I think I need the boss key for that. Here we go. And good to go. So we've made our way to a checkpoint. So by using this, this checkpoint, everyone respawns. Just like in Dark Souls. But I get all my resources back for the most part. Let's go ahead and unequip more of these things, because there's... A few too many things right now. Particularly the bottle and the bell of return, the salts are a little much. I'll keep the uh, daggers on, I might find use for them. And we do have enough salts to level up, but I can't level up at this mini shrine I just found. I have to go back to a uh, full one to do that. Stone blacksmith. And then there's these nice gravestones that show how people died. Surprise, they fell off a ledge. Same reason why everyone dies near, near a ledge. Gravity. 
Here we get. Um, and this is our push to boss fight already. With those little candles that indicate difficulty, I believe. It says two out of nine. I think fewer candles is supposed to mean less difficulty, but it's, I've had have haven't had, had the highest correlation so far. Hey, buddy. I haven't leveled yet. I'm sure I got this. I'll be fine. Hey. Ooh, that hurt. Is that the shockwave? No, it's not. I know he has a shockwave, but I don't remember the animation for it very well. That was an unnecessary dodge, apparently, because he didn't actually attack me directly. There we go. So, at least for now, dodge dodging behind his jump is the best course of action. Oh, here it comes. Alright, I jumped way too early for that. <laughs> he seems plenty vulnerable to fire, which is good for me. So far, so good. I think he get. I think I remember him getting more aggressive in phase two. Is there a phase two? <laughs> All right, so we have to worry about limited range on the fireballs. They don't go forever. Oh, mistakes are made. Oh. Nope. Just gotta heal up a little bit. Feeling all better now, buddy. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. He's coming. He's coming for me. So you really can just keep casting, too. There's a decent speed to it. You just have to worry about if you have the stamina to roll afterwards. Uh-oh. I might, may have forgotten for a moment there about the uh, follow-up attacks there. Oops. Gotta worry about the range. He's, we're just about there, though. Bye! So for obvious reasons, that was easier for me than it was when I was going in blind and smacking him with a whip that I think he was resistant to, on top of being having to fight a, a melee character with a melee spell. It'll be interesting, though. Dark Souls games have a tendency to attack you with big guys with armor and shields and a stabby weapon or something. But, uh, this game... Hey, buddies! Stuff over there. Uh, Salt and Sanctuary has, has in some ways, more varied bosses in that they're really strange... They're all kind of, their designs are all over the place, and they're very often not just some guy who hits you with a sword. So, we'll have to see how it turns out, but uh, it might be that ranged, ranged combat might not be the same advantage in this game that it has been in previous Souls games. But only time will tell. Either way, I'm sure this will be a faster playthrough than the previous one, just because I have more information. And also, I'm, I won't be necessarily looking into every single nook and cranny along the way, just because I already... Frankly, I've already explored it in the previous series, so it'll be more b focused on what the essentials are that I'm missing. Greetings, Traveler. Do you have a quest? Yeah, we'll just say yes, yeah. Uh, rescuing a princess, hmm? I haven't seen any princesses, but don't lose hope, friend. Anyway, it's good to have a quest. How would you like to know what my quest is? Sure. Excellent. My quest is to invade that castle to the east, defeat its guardians, and slay the dragon. Castles must be invaded and dragons must be slain, mustn't they? Getting into this castle is a different story. There's a bridge to it, but it's missing bits. There's another way in, but it's not easy. I saw a passage beneath the fortress you just emerged from. Perhaps it leads through a village of sorts. There was a shortcut that connected the beach to the village, but it's been barred. Perhaps you can unlock it. I've heard something about a jester. The jester knows a way to get to places no one else can? It's easy to claim something until you can actually back your claims up. It's just rumor monger. He has a lot to say, wow. I don't remember him saying that much the first time around, but maybe I just forgot. Got a black pearl, which is, I believe... Yeah, Black Pearls are actually how you undo leveling, if I remember correctly. Unless I'm mixing things up. Ah, uh, we can just always review it. Let's just re let's just go ahead and review it. It's good to remind ourselves of how parts of this game work. So, so we started off with a Link of Fire and Sky. Which nullifies the elemental imbalance. Oh, okay, we started off with that this time around. So this is a ring that... I was talking about the Fire and Sky balance, and like how, uh, as you go back and forth, you can get hurt by spending one type of element too much. Uh, apparently the mage starts off with a spell that nullifies that, which makes sense, because I also seem to only start off with a spell for one of those two elements, so 
I would only be able to cast it a few times and then I'd be hurting myself probably. The so Shimmering Pearl. Gain new ability. Okay, Black Pearls are... The, uh, the Black Pearl is how you level up. The Shimmering Pearl, I believe, is how you undo a leveling decision if you want to go back on it. Hey, item. Nice to meet you. Got the Woodsman set. The fun little sh uh, shot spot back there. Might as well just head down there. It'll give us a chance to head back to the previous sanctuary while... Oh, no. We'll opening up a few things along the way. Get off of me. <laughs> you deserve that. Oh, oh, they're all over me. They're all over me. Hey, where you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> and then the bat was on fire. The end. He deserved it. Absolutely. Can I open this? Here we go. That'll be a shortcut to a previous area. And that we know that now that those obelisk things are how you jump straight up and down. Got an item stashed over. Oh, nailed it. Always a god at platforming, I am. Careful here. Alright, bundle of salt. That'll be useful for leveling up. Little item for me, some torches. I don't think we're quite going down here yet. But we might as well meet some people. This guy sells trinket for coin. He's a little he's a little hobo. He sells a few basic items. The beggar set. Stained pages. And possibly most importantly, is he's an early access to the lock of hair, which is used for upgrading most equipment early on. But I don't have much use for him right now. God bless. And he's, there's not much to get from him right now, story-wise, either. But we've been through all that stuff. So this should have been a f base level. Yeah, this is the, the floor one shortcut. That we're back on the ground floor of the blighted... The blighted manse. Now we can head right back to our shrine and level up. Should be welcome. Might even get an extra healing item out of it this early on. Alright. So I can make an offering here. I could summon in a cleric, a blacksmith, and a merchant if I want to. Most importantly, I can level up. I can level up twice. Next level up is going to cost me 640 salt, so we're pretty close. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just do that real quick. So we should have some more salt just sitting around here. Which I'm sure can take us above the cap there. Yep, 250. That's well and truly too, uh, enough for us. I do like the fact that you can level up without actually spending your points yet, which is nice. Because in uh, Dark Souls, you have to you want you want to level up right away because you don't want to lose all your souls. But sometimes you're not really sure where you want to put your points yet, and but you have to make, you kind of just make a decision anyway because you uh, don't want to lose the souls out in combat. But here you can I could level up right now. I could just walk away without spending my level ups, but I will spend them. So we have four black pearls to spend. Right, that's enough to get uh, four points of enhanced magic, or we can get a file, which is how you get energy potions for recovering mana. There's a lot of things we can do here. I think I might start off with a... Uh, I think I'll start off with poultices first, just because we're early on. And it'll give me a chance to go back and pick up a few uh, enhanced magic while we go along. So we have, we have uh, two more points in magic now, taking us to 10 overall. I believe the soft cap where you get reduced eff effectiveness is at 50 for stats in this game. And so now we can, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, it makes sense just to go for the next enhanced magic to go towards the file sleeve. Otherwise, I can go for class 2 magic user. That also makes sense. Yeah, let's go ahead and ensure that we make it to uh, class 2 magic user. Yeah, channeler and magic user. These are these are good things to get close to. I don't know when I'll find spells that require rank two, so grabbing it right away will be good, and then we'll make our way to the file. But the important thing is we have some points in magic now. That's also good. 